How are we doing boys and girls? In this video, I wanna look at a sort of real life example about how to sort of set up a shot, light it, and expose using some of the tools in the Panasonic S5 and S5 II, et cetera, these cameras. So let's get into it. I wanna choose this frame here from that clip you've just seen in the introduction. I'm gonna talk basically through exactly how I would go about setting this up because I don't really think you see that many YouTube videos about people talking about step by step exactly what I would do is if I was on set. Now this is not my video, this is uh, a clip from an advert, an Under Armour advert that I really love. I'll put a link in the description to the whole advert so you can check it out in full, it's really cool. But I am shooting a project next week which is gonna be fairly similar to this, so my next video will be kind of behind the scenes showing exactly how I do it. All right, so let's say we turn up to this location and before we setting up any lights, turn any lights on, anything like that, we're gonna basically determine how we're gonna set up our settings in, in the camera. Generally, they're always gonna be the same for me. I'm gonna be in V-Log. I'm gonna be choosing my aperture, generally, which is wide open. I tend to shoot most things wide open. For this type of shot, I'd probably use a Zeiss 28 mil that I've got, and I'd set it to f2.8. In terms of the ISO, I'd be using one of the two native ISOs. So it would either be set to 640, or it'd be set to 4000. But basically, those settings in the camera don't change. I'm not gonna be messing around with my aperture shot to shot. If you look at films, Hollywood films, the director of photography will generally choose the aperture that they're gonna shoot the entire movie at and then they'll light and everything else to that aperture. You don't see people switching from f11 to f2.8. So I'm gonna choose my aperture wide open because I want that depth. And in a location like this, if I set up this shot, what I would notice was the windows would be completely blown out because if I'm at, let's say I'm at ISO 640, uh, I'm at f2.8 those windows at uh, the top uh, here, they're gonna be completely blown out. Then, how else am I gonna control the exposure? Well, obviously I'm gonna use a neutral density filter. In my case, a variable neutral density filter. I'm gonna stick that on the front of the lens and then I'm gonna use that to get those the exposure of those windows under control. Now, at this point, the actress is gonna be underexposed, no doubt. So that's obviously where you need to bring in the lighting to make up for that exposure difference. So. We've now set up the camera, we've got the windows here under control. So let's say they are now at about plus five stops. Something to bear in mind with Panasonic cameras is that in V-Log, the range you can expose to is plus 6.3 stops and minus eight stops. That's the limit on the sensor. One of the great things about Panasonic cameras is you have a luminant spot meter and it will tell you, you know, what the exposure is in stops at different parts of the frame. So that's exactly what I'd do. I'd be putting that little box up at those windows and I'd be making sure that the exposure on those windows is no higher than 6.3 stops. I keep looking at my hand because I've written these down. I actually have to write them down when I go to set because I do forget these numbers. But as long as that, that those windows are below 6.3 stops, then I know that the image is not blown out. The highlights are not blown out and, I, and I'm well in the range of the sensor. There's a great video by Photo Joseph, who's a Panasonic ambassador that goes into, is where I got these numbers, but he's just using a gray card and showing you on a gray card how it works. Basically, he's not really giving you a real life example like I'm trying to do here. All right, so we've got the windows under control. We know that anything below 6.3 stops, plus 6.3 stops is within range of the sensor. So I've got the windows, let's say I've got them at plus 5.5 stops. So they're just below clipping. Like I say, the actress now, or the, the, the talent, is gonna be underexposed. So this is where I'm gonna have to bring in uh, a key light. Obviously, the, the key light's gonna be coming from, from this side here, and I'm gonna have to be putting that key through a nice bit of diffusion, whether that's a sheet. In my, I mean, I'm talking about the way I do it, because I haven't got money to buy big eight by eight frames or whatever, so I'd be using like a bed sheet or a shower curtain, and I've got different sheets that I can basically layer up to give me more or less diffusion. I'll just be sticking them over tripods uh, and I'll just be blasting a light. And you'd need quite a powerful light in this situation. You'd at least need like a 300 watt light. And something else to remember is that the, the brighter you turn up that light, the brighter you're getting that light on the talent. Basically what I'm saying is you wanna get that highlight on her skin there. You wanna get that in the same range as what this window is here, because you don't want like the window to be overpowering the lighting on the talent. You want the talent generally to be sort of slightly brighter than, than the brightest thing in the frame. In this shot here, the 
the, the, high, the specular highlight on her forehead there and along her arm here is about the same luminance. I haven't actually took this image into Premiere and, and looked at it, but I would imagine that's about the same luminance. So what you're gonna to need to do is pump up the power on that key light until you're getting a similar reading on her forehead there and along her arm there as you're getting on that window there. The luminance spot meter within the camera is one of the best things about the camera as far as I'm concerned because I don't need to use waveforms or false color, uh, certainly not using a histogram. Yeah, I'm just moving that box around on the frame and I'm checking where I'm at with my, with my exposure ranges. This shadow area here, this room tone, as I would call it, the difference between there and these and these windows is, is, is gigantic. You know, there's a big difference, big contrast ratio. But on the shadow side, as long as it doesn't fall below minus eight stops, so let's say that background there, let's say this is a minus seven stops, and then this highlight up here, let's say that is plus five stops. That's the readings that you're getting off the luminance spot meter. If they're the readings that you're getting, you are well within the range of the sensor and you know you can set up that shot and expose those values, you're gonna be cool when you bring the footage into, into DaVinci or Premiere or whatever because you're not gonna crush the blacks or overexpose uh, the highlights. And then all I would be wanting to do is, I'd be wanting to make sure in this, in this example that anything on the opposite side, so camera side, where we've got the shadow on her camera side of her face here. I'd be wanting to make sure on that side of the room that there's no lights whatsoever. I'd be, if there's any windows whatsoever, I'd be blacking them off with more just bed sheets, black bed sheets, covering all those windows, making sure there's no light at all coming from the opposite side, camera side. We can then get that contrast. I mean, if you look at this example, the shadow side of her face, if we say that's like minus seven stops back here, and let's say, these are just values that I'm guessing, by the way, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to do this for real to know the exact values, but it looks like the shadow side here on her arm is probably, let's say, minus six there. The point I want to make with this video is the settings that you, you set up in your camera in terms of your ISO, in terms of your aperture, in terms of your shutter speed, i.e. 180 degrees, you start off with those fixed and you keep them fixed in every shot you're doing for that project, whatever that project is. Those values do not change. You control the exposure with neutral density and with lighting. The settings in the camera, they're sort of concrete as you go into the project. That's the first thing you set up on the camera. And then everything else is done around those settings. You're not changing the settings to suit the lighting conditions, you're changing the lighting to suit the, to, to suit the settings in the camera. You don't, like I say, you don't want to be switching from one scene, it's F11, next it's F2.8, it's ludicrous. I, I barely have to touch settings in my camera ever once I'm in a shoot because they're set from the start, they don't change. The first thing I'm ever going to be doing in a, in a location is I'm going to be looking at what is the brightest thing in the frame that, that I can't control, which is generally the daylight, the sun. I can't control that aspect of the lighting. So I want to expose for that. That's the first thing I want to do get that under control, make sure that's not clipping. And then I wanna basically bring in my lighting to bring up the exposure on things, the talent obviously, to the level that I want it. And I wanna build that, that contrast ratio. We've set up the shot, we've got the window under control, then I'm gonna be taking, uh, as I'm adjusting the light, I'm gonna be taking a reading off her skin, sort of here. I'm gonna take a reading there, and then I'm gonna be taking a reading on the, on the shadow side, and then I'm gonna have neg fill off camera here. And then I'm gonna be moving that closer or further away to get that contrast ratio between the dark side and the lit side, how I want it basically, how I think it looks tasteful uh, and looks kind of moody because I love the moody vibe. Um, I probably should have scripted this video because I feel like I've waffled and waffled and waffled, but hopefully you get the point. This is not, not hard stuff to do. You go into a location, what can't I control? Right, set my exposure for that, and then bringing in some lights to get the rest of the exposure where I want it. And it's exactly the same if you're out. If this was an outside scene, just like in the film that I showed on a previous video that I made recently, you know, I'm exposing for that sky in that shot. And then I'm uh, using neg fill and, and other things, diffusion, to control uh, the rest of the exposure. Anyway. That's it for this video. I feel like it's gone on forever. Uh, catch me on the next one, like I say, because I'm going to be on an actual, my own shoot, and I'll get into like sort of, you know, go behind the scenes on that. 
I never normally ask this in my videos, but you know, if you do like this content, give it a like, you know, um, and subscribe or whatever, you know. Can't stand saying that, it sounds super cheesy, but yeah, um, these videos take some time to put together, so it's uh, all appreciated. But uh, anyway, see you next time. Bye bye.